When we look at various sources of light, they could be uh, different kinds of light bulbs or the sun or distant stars or even your computer monitor, one thing that's immediately apparent is that all of these sources of light have different brightnesses. And when studying astronomy, it turns out that we can learn a lot of information about a source of light by considering how bright it is. However, we have to be very careful in what we mean by brightness because there's two different ways that we can describe something as being bright. And I want to introduce those two different ideas uh, today. So these two terms I'm going to refer to are first luminosity, luminosity, and the second term is flux. And we're going to go through a, a fairly simple example to just illustrate what we mean when we say luminosity and what we mean when we say the flux of a, of a source of light. And this will help us better understand what we mean when we say an object is bright. So let's say I just have some distant star, and this distant star is giving off light. And it gives off a certain amount of light every second. So there's a, a rate that this uh, star is emitting light. Well, we know that light carries energy with it. So we can also say that this star is giving off a certain amount of light energy per second. And that really is what the luminosity of an object is. Uh, it's the light energy uh, emitted per second. So light energy emitted per second. So every second, this object gives off a certain amount of light. And the units that we use to measure this are usually joules per second. So every second it gives off this many joules of energy. And that is exactly the same as saying this is how bright it is. This is the uh, power that it gives off in watts. So you've probably heard of uh, watts before. If you've ever bought in the light, then one might say that it's rated for 100 watts. And that would mean if that light gives off 100 watts of, uh, of energy, then every second that light would give off 100 joules of light energy. And for comparison, the luminosity of the sun is about 3.85 times 10 to the 26 watts. So 10 to the 26, this is a extremely high luminosity. So our light bulb was about 100 watts. This would be about four trillion trillion times more powerful is, is the light coming off of the sun. So this luminosity is kind of an intrinsic property of our source of light. We're just saying this is how much light energy is given off in a certain amount of time. But what happens to that light as it moves towards uh, maybe us? So if we assume that this light is giving off, that this source of light is giving off light equally in all directions, then we'll notice that as these beams of light get farther away from the source, they tend to spread out. And this has a very important effect on how we actually observe the light. So let's say we're looking at this distant star and we want to observe it in some way. So we put some kind of detector in the path of these light rays. Now this could be the lens of a telescope, or if you're just looking at this star, it could be the retina of your eye. It's whatever is actually picking up this light. And we see that a certain amount of light is going to go through our detector. So a certain amount of light energy could be said to be uh, going through our detector. Now let's say I take this same detector, haven't changed anything with what I'm using to observe the star, and I move it farther away. So now I have the exact same detector a little bit farther away. We notice that since these, uh, these beams of light are spreading out from the source, that as I get farther away, there is less light actually uh, going through my detector. So if I were considering this detector to be, say, my eye, then since there's less light passing through it, I would say that light source appears to be dimmer. So when we use this as kind of our definition for how bright an object is, it's more related to the flux of an object, how much light is actually passing through my detector. And that's really what the definition of a flux is. It's the light energy 
because all of these beams of light are carrying energy with them. It's the light energy through a given area, and we say that area is arbitrarily defined as one square meter. It, how much light energy is moving through one square meter of my detector area per second. And the units that we use to measure this are watts per square meter. Now, a couple of things that I should also mention about flux. When we're assuming it's the light energy that's actually hitting my, uh, my detector, my telescope, or my eye, we're assuming that this is pointed directly at the source. So we don't have uh, some detector that's you know pointing in the wrong direction. We don't have this. We're assuming that my detector is pointing straight at the source. And also, this is really the, uh, the flux from light of an object. Flux actually has a much more general definition. It's how much of anything is passing through a certain area at a certain rate. So let's say this, uh, this star was giving off particles and these particles were flying away. I could say, what is the particle flux? How many particles are passing through my detector, uh, a given area of my detector per second? Or if I have a wire and there's current flowing through it, then there would be a flux of electricity through that wire. But we're just going to consider the, the application to, to light and astronomy for this one. So we see we have two different notions of what we mean by brightness. The luminosity is kind of the intrinsic brightness of the source. How much energy is it giving off uh, per unit time, per second? Or we have how much of that light is actually reaching our detector. Now, we can relate these two uh, to notions of brightness with a very simple equation. And that equation is the flux is equal to the luminosity of the object, the total amount of light that it's giving off, divided by 4 pi times the distance to the object, the distance from the source to the object squared. So this value r uh, on this picture would be this distance. So that would be r. In, in this picture. So we can relate how the intrinsic brightness of the object, the luminosity, to how much light is actually getting to our detector. And we notice that if I have the exact same uh, source with the exact same intrinsic brightness, if I'm farther away, if this value for r is larger, then my flux is going to be less. Because I'm farther away, I'm going to see less of the light coming from the object, so it's going to appear to be dimmer. So how do we actually use this equation to study astronomy? Well, let's take a little bit closer look at it. We have three variables. We have the flux f, we have uh, the luminosity of the object, and we have our distance to the object. Well, since the flux is just how much light is hitting our telescope, this is something that we can pretty much always measure. So we measure the flux. light hits our telescope, we measure how much light actually does hit our telescope, or look into the sky and say, I see how bright this object is. Well, from there, we can do one of two things. If we know the distance that we are from the object, so if we know our, our distance, then we can use this equation to solve for the luminosity of the object. So then we can get the luminosity. And if we, you know, learn what the luminosity of a certain object is, again, we can, we can learn a lot about that object. The other way that we can do this is if we know in advance how much light is being given off by this source, if we know the luminosity, if we know the luminosity, then we can find the distance to that source. So if there's a set of objects where we know how bright they are, then we can use that as a measuring stick to find out how far away they are. And both of these steps are going to be extremely helpful in measuring cosmic distances. So when uh, I'm going to do a video series on the cosmic distance ladder, how do we actually measure the distances to stars or to, to uh, faraway galaxies? And both of these steps are going to be extremely important in that. So this just kind of shows us how the brightness of an object, knowing both the flux of the object and the luminosity of the object, 
are kind of show us more properties of light that we're going to use as a tool to study astronomy.